Good evening. Thank you so much for joining me for Good News on Entertainment. I'm Carly Boyette. Tonight we are featuring two movies. One is coming to theaters and the other one is one that you can watch at home on Great American Media. But first, let's talk about The Hill coming to theaters August 25th. I got a chance to see it early and it is by far one of my favorite sports movies now. The film is based on a true story. And before we meet that man this story is about and the director of this film, let's take a look at the movie. Ricky, I've seen you out there swinging that stick, even when you're suffering pain. Ah! But you can't play baseball. You're going to get ridiculed. <laughs> and you're going to wind up with an injury that you'll never get over. God's going to give you a higher calling. But all I want to do is play. When I swing that bat, I ain't crippled no more. And gone, Senior Ricky Hill. He did four homers in one game. Son, you might be better, but you are not healed. Your bones are rapidly depleting. It'll be a miracle if you ever walk again. You seen this? Major League trials. You're going to paralyze him. I don't need you filling him full of false hope. He's my son. Ricky, baseball had to end eventually. Time to figure out what you're going to do with the rest of your life. First time you ever talked to me like a man was to tell me to forget the only thing I ever loved. What has gotten into you? He's special. They said he will never walk and he ran. How many miracles do you need? You're playing to join the elite. I'm one of the best hitters you're ever going to see. A bad leg could cost the team wins and money. It's all stacked against me. If you don't try, you're going to die inside. I want my dreamer back. All your hope. I cannot do this alone. Dream. It's your time, Ricky! Determination and sacrifices have come down to this. Oh, I have been so excited about this interview and getting a chance uh, to talk with both of you. Of course, joining me now, Ricky Hill, who this story is based off of, and then uh, Jeff, who was uh, the director of this film, which did a beautiful job. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. Nice to have you. Nice to be here. Thanks for having us. So as soon as I got done watching the movie, um, I told you guys before we got started, I went and like immediately started Googling and thought, this story is too good. How have I not heard about this? I am so excited that the world is finally going to hear this. So Ricky, yeah. I feel like we have to, to start with you because this is uh, your life story. What a journey you have been on. And why has it been so long since uh, I feel like the world is is finally heard about this impossible story. Yeah, well, it's um, it was a thing that I didn't go around trying to brag about, or um, I, you know, other than at church and things like that. But I didn't go out and tell the world everything about it. Well, are you ready to now? Because I think you're Absolutely. you're going to get a lot of interest. <laughs> Absolutely. But what I loved about this movie, and what I loved about um, your dad, Ricky, is that it's such so many times I think we put pastors on a pedestal and we think they can't make mistakes. I, it just, it, it made him such a real person. And I understood the struggle of him um, wanting one thing for his son's life and what God, you know, what he thought God was uh, planning for your life. And it was just such a real look, I think, at humility and finding God's purpose for our life and how that may look different for everybody. So kind of speak on that uh if you can and and i'd imagine you are well okay with how they portrayed uh your dad as well absolutely Den dennis was phenomenal when i first met mr quaid it just we hit it off he understood the story tremendously and he understood me tremendously he's a man of faith as well and um it just clicked like when jeff brought in Dennis Quaid to this film. I was very thrilled, but I was also concerned about the Christian belief in, in our Heavenly Father. 
I was very concerned. And then when I met him, there was no more concern at all. It was just beautiful. It, everything just worked perfect, right, just fit right in. So, you know, I give kudos to my director, Jeff Celentano, for bringing it. He, to get Dennis Quaid was a miracle, number one, I thought. And then number two is he felt this, he feels the Holy Spirit the way I do. Dennis was the perfect actor for this movie because he he had all the qualities that I felt, you know, would make this movie what it is today, which is to me a family film. Uh, every single person, every any age, can go to this movie and just fall in love with it. Um, and it had a it had a magic kind of a magic element to the movie. Uh, based on what Ricky did that you'll see in the movie. You know, I, can't I know. We don't want to give away any spoilers. Spoil it. No, but it, but it was a miracle. And and Dennis even said to me, did this really happen? Did this kid really do this? This is unbelievable. I've never, I haven't heard a story like this in my whole life. And I said, I, it's all documented and true. It's it's real. I mean, Red Murph wrote a book about it. And um, and uh, Dennis just, to me, he, he comes from the world of, uh, you know, in baseball movies, like when he did uh, the Nat, uh, I mean, uh, he did the rookie, and um, he uh, he just has that quality that you love him, and he can be tough, he can be lovable, everybody relates to him. He's known for sports movies. He's known for you know the movie he did about the dog, the Disney film, uh, was really well received, and it was a big hit for them. Uh, Dennis just has that quality. I think that's why they cast him in that. He's just well, horrible. and I want to brag on the whole cast because here oh, you yeah, have the cast is phenomenal. Name, everybody who you may not even know a name of somebody that's in this film. I just thought everything gelled so perfectly. I honestly have never said this in my life. This is the best cast I've ever not only seen, but been a part of in any movie. And in today's world, with all this stuff that's going on, this is such a positive, uplifting movie. I mean, I, I tested the movie in, in Charleston, South Carolina. We had about 75 people in the audience and a little old man came up to me at the end of the film. You know, we didn't know him, no connection to him at all. And he grabbed my wrist and he had tears in his eyes and he said, son, you moved me. Mm. I haven't seen a movie like this since Field of Dreams. Yeah. He says, you got to get to be honest, out. it feels like a huge classic, like a lot yeah. of these other sports movies. And of, of, you know, Rudy, I mean, one of the, the writers, right, is. Um, yeah. Angelo Pizzo, who wrote Rudy and Hoosiers, is the writer. He yeah. was somebody that I, I searched out. I wanted the I wanted the best of the best for everything. Yeah. You know, um, he, he just fell in love with the story. And it took him a while to find Ricky's voice. That's kind of where Angelo comes from. And when he found it, it just clicked yeah. and it worked. Ricky, um, I want to hear from you because uh, I do. When you, you watch the movie, you go, okay, well, I want an update. Like what happened afterwards? And I love, Ricky, that you're not shy in saying, because um, obviously your health, um, you know, it did not allow you to play baseball uh, for years on end after um, and then I know you struggled uh, with the passing of your dad. Uh, Y'all stayed very close. And I think people want to hear that story. But I also love that you're vulnerable and you say, listen, I really struggled when that world came collapsing on me later. But you did eventually come back to your faith and back to God, right? I sure did. I, uh, I, I was down about three to four years losing my father right after all this happened. Um. And then I signed a major league contract and here I am playing in my fifth year. And, um, I knew that I was born. See, people don't know this, but I was born with no disc in my spine, hardly. And my legs were tangled from, I had like 29 surgeries before I was four years old. And so anyway, saying that, that's why my dad in the movie, as Dennis portrays, you'll never play baseball. He says that um, several times because he knew that I was going to get injured and they knew one day I'd probably get paralyzed. And I did. I sure did. And uh, but saying that, uh, I was very angry at God because of uh, how do you take a man that doesn't, that came from nowhere and built two churches and one in souls so many souls and god takes them and then all of a sudden i lose my baseball career diving headfirst into second base and i can't walk 
and it's over, it's easy to lose your faith real fast on something like that. And I, I battled with it for three years. And then just like, just like, um, the prodigal son, I came trucking back and, and, and my director right here will tell you my faith in Jesus Christ is number one. Hmm. Oh yeah, for sure. Rick. It's not, yeah. it's not baseball. It's Jesus Christ. Well, it's a great story to know that you went through that because every human being goes through that. I mean, that's what that's what they talk about in church every day. Your faith is uh, always waning and there's always somebody trying to get in and pull you out of it. And that's what you went through. And then you came back even stronger. And what's great about this movie is it appeals to everybody. Um, what I love about the movie and what I set out to do was that I wanted it to touch the non-believers in a way that they weren't expecting. You know, they would come out of this Kind of like people came when I went to see. Um, I can only imagine there were people. There was two people in the audience when, and I stayed after the credits. And the guy said to me, "You like this movie?" He yelled at me, and I said, "Are you the filmmaker?" And he laughed. He said, "No, I just came here. I'm, I don't even go to church, but I'm sure going to go now. This movie's unbelievable." And I couldn't believe he said that. And I said, "That's the movie I want to make." And I feel like we set out and and made that happen. I mean, the movie. Anybody who doesn't hey, look, if you have a family. A father, a mother, a brother, a sister. Um, you love baseball, hate baseball. You you know you go to church, you don't go to church. You're not a Christian, you are a Christian. All those people will love this movie. Hey, and one last one last thing I would like to say. Yeah, children that are out playing now at five years old playing baseball. This is the movie that these children need to be seeing. They do, because that's why. That's where I started at, at roughly five. Um, but I, when I picked up a stick from day one, I knew I had it. God gave it to me. I, I never knew why God took the movie and took it away, my baseball career. But here's your answer. It's this film about God, family, sports that brings people in. And if it even wins one soul to Jesus Christ, it was worth it. Well, and I love, I want to share, you told me that your dad used to come in. He never came to one of your games. No. But you said he would always check in with you at night and ask yeah. how you did. And yeah. what would he tell you, Ricky? He would he would say exact words, his son, how'd you do tonight? And I say, well, dad, I went, I went three for three. I hit one home run. And then I would say, Dad, how did you do tonight? And he goes, well, son, I, I kind of beat you out. I hit three home runs. I won three people to the Lord tonight. And this was every night. Oh, I just it's love so, it. it was, it's such a great deal. Not that he never cared because he always cared. Yeah. But he had two churches to build mm. with his bare hands. Yeah. And he built them. Guys, we're out of time. Again, I wish I could, we could just go on and on, but uh, I'm so excited to see this movie finally in theaters and uh, see how it how people respond. I know it's going to be great. I'm going to be praying for a great response. And uh, I look forward to, to hearing about future projects that you're doing, Jeff, too. I don't know how you top this, so good luck with that. Uh, that's going to be a hard one. <laughs> yeah. Thank you both so much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Truly, one of my favorite movies. And again, it comes to theaters August 25th. All right, now on to another movie that also focuses on the love, relationships, and bonds that form between fathers and their children. Strong Fathers, Strong Daughters is a best-selling book by pediatrician Dr. Meg Meeker. Well, now the book has inspired a movie of the same name. Before we hear from Dr. Meeker, who is also an international speaker with a lot of great wisdom, take a look at the movie that, again, is coming to great American media on August 21st. A man can argue with friends and colleagues whether God exists. But when he looks at his daughters, you, Zoe, and Abby, the best three things in my life, he just knows. Buenas noches! <laughs> I got a surprise for you. This is why we sent you to business school. I'm getting married. What? In three weeks. What? <laughs> Stop being happy! So good, don't even know my daughter. What's there? She's 16. She's not done cooking yet. Can we microwave her? 
can't wait for you guys to meet his parents. Wonderful to meet you. With three daughters, this is wisdom, my friend. Read carefully. Looks like it's been through battle. Consider it a field menu. <laughs> Zozo Parte, the pod bot? Get your hands off my daughter. Hey, hey bro. Get the car, now. No, no, no. Feeling like the bad guy here. You still don't get it. I took my eye off the ball. I'm gonna get better at how I show them. Daughters are gifts to guide, love, teach, but they're not for us to keep. Love and you share. At some point, you realize your daughter's taking her last ride on your shoulders. I'm learning to let go of my plans and start trusting God with his. All right, uh, Dr. Meg Meeker, so excited to get some time with you. Our challenge is going to be to shorten this as, as much as we can. But I just love, because my first thought was when I was reading over everything and, and looking at the movie that's getting ready to come out um, for Great American Media, my thought is the message that you continuously put out there about how important a father figure is, you know, I'm like, how do we get more dads to realize that? Because they may not want, you know, read a book or they may not want to listen to this or whatever, but a movie's pretty good and easy. Well, thank you. I think that visual... Um, is very uh, compelling to teach a story. And it's easy to watch. It's a, it's a feel good movie. It's like, really like a Christian father of the bride, if you will. And it's, it's a no brainer. You know, you can just sit down and watch it an hour and a half. Who can't do that? But to read a book takes more time, of course. And so um, I love the movie. I, I, I don't own the movie, but I love it. And I think it tells a fabulous story. Well, and this is something you have also talked about is our culture and how men and dads are portrayed, mm -hmm. um, you know, in a lot of what's on TV right now still, unfortunately. Um, dads, I don't think, and I love that you promote this idea of that. Um, I get it. You know, I'm a strong mom myself. I know you love everything that, that women can bring to the table, but there's something equally. I love that you celebrate the importance of both you know, what a mom figure can mean and what a father figure can mean. And I think that at this point in culture, it's extremely important because they're very different things that a dad brings to his children versus a mom brings. You know, a lot of men will say, well, who are you to, to be a father expert? And they say, I'm not a father expert, but I'm a kid expert. And I will tell you what your kids are saying about you because they repeat a lot of the stuff. And so what I really wanted to do is help fathers come behind the eyes of their children. And I felt that if a dad could see himself as his child sees him, it would be a game changer. It'd be a life changer. And so if fathers aren't going to read the book or go through, I think it's very important that mothers or we women can rather than berate them and rather than put them down like every television show it does out there. We can do the opposite. We can say, you know what? Um, when Angie came home from her time with you, she was so excited. Boom, that's it. Because men need to feel respected and they need to feel proud of their job. And if we don't respect them as a father and we don't teach our kids to respect them, it's over. And so that's ex what our culture is doing is disrespecting them and putting them down and elevating women. And that's been going on for 30 years. I've seen it happen. And that's why I really wanted to go out and speak out to fathers and mothers about how desperately kids need their dads. One thing I want to get your thought on too, because I, I, I get it. I, it's a, it's a sensitive topic. And I feel like as when we maybe are, are struggling with something that happened in our childhood and here we are now as parents um, there's so much brokenness and so much that we're trying to heal from. Is it ever too late, you know, to, to get in the game? And if you did have this, you know, bad experience as a kid and, you know, I just love that there is hope, especially for father figures that if we didn't get the best father here on earth, there's someone else that can fill in that gap. 
There is always, always, always hope, and it's never too late. Now, best case scenario, um, a, a father and a daughter had a broken relationship, but dad realizes it later on in life. She's 30, she's 35. And she recognizes through reading my book, this is what you needed from your dad. And this is what you wanted. And this is what, for every reason, he didn't provide. So if a dad is willing to meet with a daughter and, and she's able to say, dad, this is what I really wanted. And I so want it. And, and I know that you couldn't give it or whatever. And dad asks for forgiveness. It's, it's a, it changes your life because daughters want to forgive their dads because they're tied to their dads forever and ever and ever. For good or bad, you're always tied to your dad. I always say every woman takes one man to the grave and it's her dad. Mm. Because there's so many needs that you have from your father that you are desperate to have filled. So if you're fortunate enough to have a father who's willing to come with you as an adult woman and work through th some things and ask for forgiveness and acknowledge what he didn't give, that's amazing. If, however, dad isn't in the picture and doesn't want to do that, the beauty of the book is every chapter points out what every girl wanted from her dad. And if she didn't have that need met, she can go to the Lord and say, Lord, I wanted my dad to be my first love, but he wasn't. And it hurt. So I'm going to bring that to you and ask you to take care of my hurt and to be the most important father in my life and the, my first love. And so once we know as women what we wanted as children and the wounds we carry because of our fathers not able to meet those needs, then we can turn to the Lord and say, this is what I need. If we don't really know specifically what's causing our hurt from our fathers, we can go to the Lord and say, please heal me, please heal me. And he will. But if we acknowledge specifically what we wanted from our dads and our dads aren't willing to, to come to the table, the Lord always. I love it. I just love it. You talk a lot about um, connectivity with our parents too. And I think that's, and so what, and that's what the Lord wants with us, right? I mean, that's what it's a, it's about a personal relationship. You point out it's not, um, and again, because this is in my la life, dad here is, is a coach of my son's team. And there is, it, it's something more than just, um, I don't know, you need to be present. Yes. But explain what that connection is. That's important between uh, a father and a daughter, what they're, what they're really looking for. I'm glad you brought that up because I will say to dads, you need to connect more. You need to be deeply attached to your daughter. And, they and that may be hard for men. They're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Just tell me what to do. <laughs> Just what should I do with my daughter on Saturday morning? You know, should I take her here? Take her. There? So it's it's difficult. We women sort of are used to sort of emotionally stepping into that. But a dad with a daughter, a they're intimidated, and b they really don't think they connect with their daughters because they believe their daughters don't want them. So first of all, when a child is born, I tell mothers, yes, the baby needs to attach to you, but they also need to attach to dad. So begin right away. You know, let the dad feed the baby a bottle, let him rock them, let them un know that dad smells different, he looks different, he feels different. So start it right away. Unfortunately, a lot of mothers sabotage that mm -hmm. because they want to be their child's everything and, and they don't want to bottle feed because of nipple confusion, this and them. I forget it. The child needs <laughs> attached to debt. <laughs> a child who get really the priorities the child as the child gets older and dad finds it confusing on how to connect with his daughter here's what i encourage them to do from about the time that you know the child's an early elementary on take 10 seconds a day and hug your daughter now that seems very simple and dads will go what what difference does that make it makes a huge difference because it allows the daughter to know that you see her, that you like her, and that you want her presence. And then make eye contact with your daughter. You know, put your phone down. You can be in the same room with your daughter and not connect at all because you're not paying any attention. So 
dur moments during the day, look at her in the eyes, say, how are you? Give her a big hug. And that communicates so much to the daughter that my dad loves me, but he really likes me and he values. Mm -hmm. The second thing dads can do is set apart some special time during the week or every other week, say an hour on a Saturday morning, take your daughter to, to breakfast. Sit there and listen. Ask an open-ended question and listen. Parents always say, my teenager doesn't want to talk. Mm -hmm. Yes, they do, but, but they really don't believe parents want to listen to what they have to say. Either parents ask a question because they want to correct the answer, or they want to ask a question because they want to know all the bad stuff the kid is doing. And I think it's important for dads to ask questions and listen to understand, mm -hmm. not to gain knowledge, to understand. And if dads do just those few things, 10 seconds a day, 15 seconds a day hug, make eye contact and ask your daughter, how are you? And set aside some special time as a routine. Once uh, a week, once a month, Saturday mornings, breakfast together. That's your standing date, a bike ride, anything. And that's enormous in, in helping you attach to and connect with your daughter. You know, we also, I love my daughter, good, but daughters need to know they're liked and that you want their company and that they're seen. And if you can get that through to your daughter, you're home, you're home free. I love it. Oh, I just love it. And I, this information um, is just so crucial, I think, to get out. So to have a movie, this is my jam. This is my passion. What I love when there's the, when there's good media out there and good content that we can use to spark these conversations yeah. Again, this is what I love. So thank you for your time. Uh, I hope this uh, movie does well. I hope as many people see it as they can and then continue to research this. And uh, best way to follow you, because I know you're kind of everywhere too and have great resources and classes. And Well, I would just encourage people to go to meekerparenting.com. I also did a, um, a course on Strong Fathers, Strong Daughters, where I get on videotape just like this and I explain every chapter. What does it mean and how do you do it? Because a lot of people are visual learners or auditory learners. They don't want to read. They want to have somebody step in front of them and talk. And that's what I do pretty well. So I would encourage them to check out the Strong Fathers, Strong Daughters class that's on my website. Again, Strong Fathers, Strong Daughters is currently streaming on Pure Flix and will be premiering on Great American Media on August 21st at 8, 7 central. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Again, I'm Carly Boyette, and I look forward to seeing you next week right here on your Christian television network.